Kristen Brindley. Hi, Hal. <laughs> it is so good to see you. Same. Thank you, you for having me. We haven't talked in probably a year, and then we just caught up the other day. Uh, and then I, yeah. I said, we, we should totally do a podcast together. <laughs> yeah, but- yeah, that was that was a pleasant surprise. I was really, it was nice talking to you. And yeah, thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you are, uh, seriously, you're one of, I was talking to our mutual friend, Brianna, letting her know we were talking and we both agree like you're just one of the kindest most generous um most like forward thing like there's so many adjectives to describe you as a person that are positive and we were just talking about your daughter avery before we started recording and how our kids are growing up too fast like the old cliche they grow up so fast it is so true right way too fast (laughs) did you say she is nine or she's about to turn nine yep she is nine she's gonna be 10 in november it's crazy I remember you know, your daughter being small. like super short, like small too, right? And she's 14 now. Like what? <laughs> I, know, I know. Yeah. My daughter's 14. Your daughter's nine. And like you said, some days that we both agreed, they, you know, well, you said she talks like she's 30 or she talks like she's four, right? My daughter's more 30 or, you know, 14 is about as low as she goes. But um, <laughs> so I want to, I want to, uh, for, for everybody listening that doesn't know you or know me or, well, they know me, but know our relationship. <laughs> Um, you know, we have a lot in common and I was thinking about all the things that we have in common. And and one is that, you know, you and I met in Cutco, we both worked for the same company. Um, and, uh, we both are cancer survivors, right? So another really major aspect of our lives was the cancer journey. Uh, I want to touch on that today. And then, um, we both are huge advocates of the miracle morning. And the difference being, I have to be, I wrote the book, right? Like I have to be, (laughs) but you have given over you've gifted over 3000 copies of the book in the last, well, 10, 11 years since the book came out. Um, And so I want to touch, I want to touch on all of those and and a lot more. Um, But start with Cutco real quick. And for people that don't know, right, Cutco, you and I, we sold kitchen knives in home presentations. (laughs) So I want to know um, a few things about that. Like what what age were you when you started that? What were you doing before that? What were your expectations? And then what happened? So how old were you? What were you doing before that? And then what were your expectations? And then what happened? Because obviously for you, I live for me, like it turned into so much more than I ever imagined that it would. And I'm curious if it was the same for you. Oh, goodness. Yeah. So, I mean, Cutco changed my life. I definitely, um, I made more than my dad in college. <laughs> and wow. paid for Earning school. more money than your dad in college. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I paid for school and um, it was not, I, you know, I thought I was just selling knives, but it really it changed my life and changed how I viewed money and um, how I viewed business. And I'm very grateful to Cutco and all the training that I received. Like I still, I still have Cutco clients that still buy Cutco for me. I have a partner that runs that business. So yeah. Yeah, that summer job of 20 years later is still, <laughs> you know. Wow. So what year did you start? I started in 2002. So literally 20 years. <laughs> okay. I was, yeah, I was 1998. So four years before you. And you were in college yes. when you started? Yes. Yep. I was in college when I started. I was a soft, between sophomore and junior year. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to pick, like, what was the biggest um either lesson or benefit that you gained from your your career selling cutco Ooh, you know it's uh, a, there's a lot of them i know that are hard to pick one i didn't prep you that, that is that's hard to so i would say um shoot it's either mindset or work ethic um mm. both of those were a huge contributor from cutco like the work ethic that you get from just doing the appointments and the mindset to be okay to have rejection and all the other things, those two items have served me the rest of my life for sure. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that, that makes sense. Mindset and work ethic. Um, the, and now what's amazing is you literally, you, you, you have a, you run a different business now and your Cutco business, you've hired someone, empowered someone to run that business for you. So it still exists. You still service your customers. How many customers do you have at Cutco? You know, uh, about 3000 or so. About, wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, change, yeah. change. Yeah, I, I, my manager used to always say it's, it's not about selling knives; it's about changing lives. And uh, both for the people that buy the product, but also really for the. I mean, I think more than anything, it's the people that go through that process. Yeah, I always thought that um, it was such great karma that, especially when I was in college selling knives, um, that people saw me to help me with school. But they had then had the knives the rest of their lives, and. I have people that have bought them 20 years ago that still, I see when I go back to my hometown and they thank me and 
Um, I helped him get him sharpened and it's pretty great. Like I feel great about what we've, we've done with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, it's a good yeah. feeling. Yeah, it is cool. I mean, the product being guaranteed forever, like when I was even selling cut white seats, they're like, Oh, I bought this 51 years ago and I still use it every night and the company sharpens it or, you know, like, like there are not that many products that you bought 50 years ago that still work as good today. Right. All right. I'm getting into my cut. I'm going to start selling. I know. Here. <laughs> I'm a podcast. Um, but, uh, so I want to transition to your cancer journey because, uh, you know, I, I don't know the exact statistic, but it's a large number of people uh, uh, have had cancer or know someone. I mean, I've, I rarely have met anybody that their life wasn't touched by cancer in some way, whether they had it or a relative, someone had it. Um, talk about a little bit your cancer journey. And here's what I'm, I'm curious is, um, when, you know, when did you have cancer? Like how, again, how old were you trying to gauge what part of your life uh, that was? And then what did you learn from that experience? Because I think I feel like everyone that goes through cancer comes out saying, uh, often it's the, one of the best things that ever happened to me because of the growth I experienced and who I became on the other side. Um, so yeah, I'd love, when did you have cancer? How old were you? And, and what was the, what was that like? Or, and what was the biggest takeaway? Yeah. Um, so I was 31, 32, uh, I wow. had cervical cancer and, um, I was really young. Uh, I was like a interesting case for Walter Reed where I was, um, treated yeah. and it was 2013. Um, I actually ran the Marine Corps marathon in 2012 with cancer and didn't realize it. <laughs> um, really? yeah. Um, and yeah, it was marathon by the way. It was. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, so yeah, I, um, I was diagnosed and then went through, um, 40 radiation treatments and like seven chemo and, you know, cancer is a thumbprint. It's different for everyone. I just read a statistic that 40% of people before they pass on in life, um, will have cancer or, or have cancer. It's mutation of the cells It's mm -hmm. brought on by aging too. It's kind of crazy. So I read that in life for Tony environments. Robbins. Well, I'm sorry. I cut you off. What were you saying? Oh, no, I read that in life force with Tony Robbins recently. Oh, wow. That was a good book. Yeah. yeah I, I bought it. It's one that it's on my shelf. I have not, not read it yet. It's 17 hours, but he says at the end, like, you're weird if you read, if you finish, but you're an amazing human. It's kind of neat. I was uh, like, oh yeah, it is 17 hours. The audio book um, was 17 The audio book hours. is 17 hours. That's insane. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's only like 17 Miracle Mornings though, right? Like <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love it. And so what, yeah, so what, what, what were your, your biggest takeaway or takeaways from going through that journey and how long were you on, how long was your treatment? How long was that journey for you? Yeah, that was almost three months. Um, and man, I learned a lot and it was the worst, best thing that ever yeah. happened. Um, you know, God, I learned so much. So when I was on the radiation table, actually, like I used the five minute rule a couple of different times and, mm -hmm. um, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through this? Things like that. And well, there was a lot of gratitude that came from that for my family, for my daughter, for, um, just purpose of life. There's a lot that came from surviving that. Um, yeah, it was <laughs> worst, best thing ever happened. How like yeah. value of time, the way I think about time, how I spend my time with my family, how precious it is. Like, yeah, worst, best thing that ever happened. You're totally right. Yeah. Um, do you do anything differently now as a result of that in terms of um, like diet or exercise or, you know, personal development or spirituality, like any, anything, anything that's been different since then? Yeah. I feel like you and I have probably gone on a lot of the same, like we've talked about different diets and different things. Like I, goodness, I've done like the whole 30. I did keto. I then I've done some, uh, veg vegetarianism. I've, yeah. you know, um, I'm really on like six smaller lean and green meals now. Like I'm very health conscious. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you go through PET scans, you realize that sugar and carbs show up looking like cancer. So it just makes you not um, want to eat a ton of sugar and carbs, you know, because yeah. it looks like cancer on a screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, I'll take that as a, as a sign, yeah, right? You know, yeah, PET scans, you're not allowed to have that stuff beforehand. So, I mean, maybe that's a good sign too, not to do too much of that, you know? Yeah. 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 And that's for me. It's like, um, I looked back, like when I got cancer, they go, we don't know what causes your particular cancer. It's such a rare cancer. And 
I went, well, let me look through my entire life and think of what are all the things that I put in my body or did to my body that were not natural, right? Whether it was pharmaceutical drugs, you know, I was on Adderall in my twenties and I was like, oh, that, you know, that's one, one molecule away from the street drug methamphetamine. And uh, I was like, probably not good for you, right? I don't <laughs> think the body takes that as, oh yeah, this is, yeah, we welcome this. This is natural, right? You know, and I took a lot of workout supplements in my twenties, trying, you know, my vanity, trying to look buff and, you know, impress girls and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, those, <laughs> those might've contributed. Um, I wasn't sleeping a lot. You know, I used to not value sleep and think I want to sleep as little as I can. You know, it was the whole, I'll sleep when I'm dead mentality, right? So, um, yeah, so for me, I was like, I'm going to do everything in my power now, just where I'm not going to put anything in my body that could cause cancer. Because I, I think that, you know, I, not I hate, but I don't like when people are like, everything causes cancer. So I'm just going to live my life. It's like, well, no, everything, organic fruits and vegetables probably don't cause cancer. And hell, you know what I mean? Like, like meditation, I don't think causes cancer. In fact, there's a lot of things that actually counteract the probability of cancer. And so just as a message for anybody listening, like, you know, I really believe there's a great book called Anti-Cancer. And it's like, live that way now so that you don't have to suffer on the radiation table or with an IV in your arm getting chemotherapy, right? Amen. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's talk about the Miracle Morning because, in fact, let me unpack this. I, I might share this in the intro. I'm not sure. We'll see. But um, you literally, uh, you reached out to the day and you're like, hey, Hal, I need to order 500 more copies of the Miracle Morning. Like, that's how. And I'm like, and then. I called you. I was like, hey, there's a new edition. Do you know about the new edition? And you, you didn't know about it yet. And I'm like, hey, it's coming out. There's all these pre-order bonuses. And so that's how we ended up talking again. Uh, and then I was like, I got to have you on the podcast. Like, you know, you're, you're, because, oh, one of the things you told me, in fact, maybe this is where we'll start. Um, or no, let's start. We'll, we'll go there next. I want to talk about what the Miracle Morning means to you. Like, how has the Miracle Morning affected your life? And then I want to ask you about why, you know, why have you gifted it to 3000 people? And then specifically about what you told me about your mom, we talked the other day. So we'll go in that order. So I'll, I'll take them one at a time. Um, how has the Miracle Morning impacted your life? The Miracle Morning uh, has impacted my life in so many different ways, even down to like what I do for a living now. Um, mm. It has literally, I mean, I've, I've read about 40 books a year. Um, for the last at least five, six years, that's how many. That is incredible right there, by the way. Let me highlight <laughs> 40 books a year for the last five or six years. So we're looking at 200 books. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, my bookshelf behind me, like I actually have a ton more. I have five or six versions of your book too that I've read all the different ones too, like being a parent. Uh, oh, all the series books. Yeah, for a salesperson, for a parent, um, the millionaire one, the real estate one. Like, I've definitely read a few different different versions, actually. <laughs> You're amazing. Um, You're so amazing. Okay. Um. So yeah, no, it's it's meant a lot for for me personally. Like the five minute. You're one of the things you told me in near the beginning was to use the five minute um, journal, and that really helped with doing gratitude and. Um, affirmations, visualization, like the entire piece that really helped in that journey. Because for me, and one of the tips I have for people is to start yeah. with the one that you're struggling with, you know, um, for you me, mean, you mean the, the specific of the savers that you're struggling with? Yep. Whatever saver you're struggling with at the yeah. time, start with it. Like I usually, whatever one I'm like, if it's exercise, most of the time I feel like I get to, like I get to exercise. Like it's pretty awesome. There's been times yeah. in my life where I was laying on a radiation table and I didn't get to. Yeah. Um, so I usually have the get to attitude, but once in a while, that'll be my first one. Cause I'm like, Oh, I don't feel like that today. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so whatever one, you know, is giving you like any kind of issue in your head or whatever, I always start with that one if if I'm having something like that. And is that with um, like the philosophy, like the eat the frog philosophy? Is that why you? Yep, do it? eat the, I mean, yeah, eat like, the frog. Yeah, that one out of the way, and then it's all uphill or downhill from there, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. an easy easy one from that. I mean, I love the app too. Like, I don't know um, if you were talking about that today at all, but like the app is really really good, and having Patricia's voice on there and Lucy and yeah. all this guys is really awesome. Like, yeah, the Miracle Morning app. Yeah, no, it's. It's been cool. Like I, I, I thought oh, it's just an app, you know, but when I read the reviews on iTunes, there's a lot of people that say, I fell off the miracle morning. I used to do it. I didn't do it. I got the free app. And then now I'm finally consistent. Like the app gave me that accountability and that structure and that consistency. And so, yeah, so I'm like, yeah, so it's, I'm very passionate about sharing the app now as well. Um, That's really good. 
Like I, I love all the experiences and on, and everything on there. Like it's really good. How you, you guys did a great job. Josh did a great I job. I give Josh, yeah, Josh Eidenberg gets the most of the credit. He's he's the head of the app development uh, development team. What um, what's your favorite of the savers and and why? And any 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 tips on it? Like why is it your favorite? But I'm curious if you have a favorite and why. You know, um, silence is golden. And I'm very fortunate. I feel like I, I get to talk for a living and connect people. That's what I do. And uh, so silence for me in the morning has been like a godsend. Um, so the gratitude and silence one is, pro- is probably my, my absolute favorite. Yeah. Favorite. And what do you talk, walk us through what your silence is typically like? Is it, uh, yeah, what is it like and how long, how long do you do it for? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, um, it's funny. I, I wake up way before my family. So I'm up at like 5 a.m. every day. Um, and I'm in silence from everyone for a good hour and a half. Um, and it is so nice. <laughs> yeah. um, and the first, like the intentional um, silence usually has gratitude. Like I, I do the things I'm grateful for and I write out and scribe. Um, I do the silence and then the, the scribing. So gratitude for at least five minutes like literally each day and it's now do you do, do you do them in that order do you go from silence to scribing yes yeah i love that scribing used to be my hardest thing and uh, now it's not yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no i love i love that and i love you know the people ask you know do i have to do sabers in order and of course the answer is no mm-hmm. um but it is interesting like i've played with different orders and and what the the value of each so for example there was a time where I tried scribing first. And so I would, I would, and I would start by writing, I would answer the question, is there anything I need to let go of? Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that was a beautiful first part of the miracle morning. And I'm like, you know what? I've been super stressed over this thing. Like that's not serving me, you know? Uh, and so I would, I would just write it out and be like, I am letting go of being stressed and worried about this thing that I can't control or it's inevitable or whatever. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so I love that, you know, going in different orders, depending on, and now I usually start with, um, 60 seconds of jumping jacks just to like lift the brain fog and get me like, you know, wake up my brain, get me energized. And so, yeah, so I, I love that you go silence and then in describing and, uh, and really focusing both on gratitude. Is that, is that part of your silence? Or are you kind of sitting there and kind of meditating in gratitude or, or how would you describe it? Yeah, I, I sit in just silence and I'm, I focus on like the energy of what grateful feels like. And then I start to list things I'm grateful for. Um, and then, you know, it kind of goes from there. Like sometimes I, I have done meditation. I don't, I wouldn't say that I'm amazing at meditation, <laughs> but I'm, I'm much better than I used to be. Um, it was a, that was the first challenge in my miracle morning was trying to meditate. And I yeah. had the, and then the silence piece with gratitude always just lends into um, a great morning. Like, That's awesome. I, uh, no, I, I think for most people, meditation is probably like the chat, you know, we have our, our monkey mind that just doesn't stop. So in the new book, I teach um, emotional optimization meditation, which is just this kind of, it's something I made up. I'm sure someone else has probably done something similar, but it's where instead of clearing your mind, which is you know challenging, uh, and it has benefit, but to me, the biggest benefit is I identify what's the optimal emotional state that I want to experience, and then I get myself into that state, and then I set my timer, and I meditate, or I like to use the word marinate in that state, and, and it's hardwiring it into my nervous system so that it's easier, and I think that's, that's almost without even saying it, that's what you're doing with gratitude, right? Like when you get into a grateful state, and then you meditate in that state, you just spend time in it. Um, it hardwires it into your, you know, your subconscious, your nervous system, et cetera. So I when that. I, yeah, when I start my day in gratitude, like, cause with most days really that the energy and the frequency that I feel like I'm on is, is totally different. And, you know, I have missed days and I'm just not as happy those days, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I was telling you that story, like my, my mom, like she, when she does her miracle morning, I can tell when she's like on her miracle morning and when she's not as much. Yeah. <laughs> and we've, we've talked about it and she's like, yeah. And uh, it really is something that changes when you can help people by changing a behavior or a habit and yeah. to create more happiness. I feel like that's an amazing thing. And I feel like that's what the miracle morning does is yeah. you help people change their behavior and I mean, for me, it's, it's affected, um, my team, the culture on our team, like how we 
how we grow, how we handle, um, you know, challenging situations. Like just, we're always growing because of the miracle morning. Like it's, you can't sit stagnant if you're you're growing, you know what I mean? So is that something, is it like, is it like required reading for your team or do you gift everybody the book? Like what is that? Oh yeah. No, I've given, I mean, I gave it to all my clients. I've given it to, I mean, I've given over 3000 of away. So like from the Cutco business to the real producers, I now own seven areas of real producers. Normally I have that up on my screen, but instead I wanted to have my bookcase up and your books are on there and stuff. Um, I, but no, I've, I've given it anyone. Um, and not even that, like I've given it to my hairdresser. I've given it, you know, just to anyone that I feel like needs it. And that happens a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, 3000 is just, it's wild. Um, what, what, <laughs> When did you start gifting the book? Like, what, what was there? Like, did you buy one and give it as a gift or did you go like, or was I promoting something and you're <laughs> like, you bought 50 no. at a time or like, do you remember how, back when that started? Yeah, I think I got like 50 of them. And then um, I was like, hey, if we get a huge bulk order together, how can you help me out? Because that, you know, I wasn't doing as well back then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, we got a big bulk order together between a few Cutco people. And then I did another one. And, you know, you really did affect, um, in 2016, when we, you came out and did all those masterminds with me, um, I got a bunch of books then again too, but then, uh, um, it started this whole, I, I felt comfortable throwing big events to help people Mm -hmm. and that really led into real producers too. So like this crazy, you know, cyclical thing. And a lot of my real producers, people, not only did they have, they had their, your book, but they also went to best year ever. Like I have a few people that you know, went to three different best year ever's that had seen you speak, um, at one of our, our events together. So yeah, Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, You, um, you, yeah, you brought me out to speak. Was that 2016 when you brought me out to speak? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It was 2016. Wow. And that was the year I was, I, uh, that I was diagnosed with cancer. So it was, it was like a a week and a half later. Yeah. Was it that soon? It was like two weeks late. It was crazy how, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 That is wild. Yeah. Is wild. Wild. Um, yeah. So the, uh, I, I know you, I know you've, you've told me that you've had some challenges with the miracle morning and you've got some tips kind of on how to overcome those challenges. And I know people I get, I hear like how I fell off the miracle morning. Like I was doing it every day and now I'm not consistent. Um, so what, what challenges have you had with it? Right. Cause it hasn't been perfect. I'm sure for the last 11 years. And then what yeah. are any tips you have on how to overcome challenges with the miracle morning? You know, uh, the miracle morning for me has been, it's a stabilizing like morning routine that really, it helps me set the intention for my day, the intention for the week, the month, the year. So whenever I like fall off of it, which has definitely happened. And sometimes it's like on a vacation. Sometimes it's like just, you know, crazy busy and, you know, I'm working out at 5 a.m., but I'm not doing some of the other things or it's just crazy time um, in business or something, right? Because yeah. we've been growing a lot. Uh, so that definitely has happened. And whenever it does, the the day just doesn't seem the same. And if I string two or three of those days together, sometimes somebody on my team will be like, man, you don't seem like yourself. And I'll think about it and be like, oh, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> and then I just do it. The, yeah, the, yeah. I literally do it that day, like before I go to bed, just to get myself back into and then just get back into it the next morning. Um, but it's a forgiveness thing too. Like mm. even when you break a habit, you got to forgive yourself and then do it again. So not, not beating yourself up, which so many people do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's not an obligation. It's a, I get to, and I think that is one of the biggest things I can impart is that I get to attitude and, you know, that really hit me from cancer, but like carrying it through the miracle morning and, you know, I get to do a miracle morning. So like forgive yourself for the day before and then just get back in, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, um, right. I, I, my philosophy on that is, or my little rule of thumb, it's almost like a mantra is never let one bad day turn into two. Right. It's like, you know, and that's what we do is we like one bad day turns into, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm lame or, eh, you know, or, or it turns into it because it's like, well, I missed a day and I'm still like alive, like nothing detrimental happened. So maybe I'll miss another day and I'll eventually get back to it, you know? Um, 
So yeah, never letting one misday turn into two. And that also means never let three misdays turn into four or 17 misdays turn into 18 or six months turn into seven months, right? Like it's just realizing that at any moment you can go, okay, I'm gonna get back to what I know works, what I know you know I can do, what I know is useful and helpful for me. So um, you mentioned real producers a couple of times. I'm just, just for those that don't know, what is real producers? What, what do you do? And I, I'm actually wanna unpack it a little bit because when, when I came out and spoke, you had, I believe, like one real producer's territory. And now you have, is it four? I have seven now. Seven. Now. <laughs> seven. Okay. Um, seven. I didn't want to over guess, but okay. Seven. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. What is real producers um, shortly? And, and what, uh, yeah. And, and, and how have you scaled to seven of these territories? You know, I, I'm really fortunate. Um, reading all these books and doing all these things has um, raised mm. my leadership lid. I actually, in preparation for this, I was like, I asked a couple of people who've known me as long as you have, like what's changed over the last, you know, 10 years. And um, my leadership lid grew like quite a bit. So I have a team of about 30 people um, and uh, we're in seven territories for real producers. And what real producers is, is we really connect the top agents in a city it's usually about the top 2% or so. You say do. agents mean real estate agents. Yep. Real estate yeah. agents. So, yep. The top 500 real estate agents in most of our territories do about 80 to 85% of all the business out of, you know, 10, 20,000 agents depends on the city. The 80, and 20 rule, right? <laughs> 80, 20. Yeah. On yeah. steroids and real estate. So yeah, yeah, those people, we have a publication where we tell their stories. I love it. How like I get to, we interview agents and we get to hear their, their, you know, stories of success and success leaves clues for everybody else mm -hmm. and it leaves a legacy by sharing their stories. So the heart of what we do is share stories and then we connect everybody with events and it's, it's the best of the best. Like in the DC one where I started, you know, they have to do, it's, I think the bottom person did like 15 million last year and wow. um, it's crazy. Yeah. So I get to ha hang out with these people and um, connect them all and we have private social media and all that kind of stuff too. So yeah, I just have people in each city that are boots on the ground for the events now and a whole team to do editorial. We put out a book like every month. Like we we're putting out almost 400 pages now every month, which is crazy. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, That's it's cool. cool though. Yeah. I want to ask, you know, I want to ask some of your philosophies on success and just life in general. Like you're, you again, anyone that has read 200 books in the last five years has, you know, a lot to share. Um, but not just the reading is that the implementation, like you've, you've been learning and implementing, you know, for at an extraordinary level. And so, uh, you know, even like when you, your whole, your whole way of being is how can I serve? And it's very sincere. Like I was looking, the text message you sent me earlier when we were talking about our discussion today is you ended it with how can I best serve you in this, Hal? Um, you know, and I feel you're always asking that and you're always, it's, it's sincere and you follow through when somebody asks for support. And the thing is, I didn't ask you to buy 3000 Miracle Morning books. So people don't need to ask for your support. You're just that kind of person. And so I think that when it comes to your philosophies on success, I'd love to start there and hear, um, what, what, how do you view the role of service, of selflessness, of generosity, of looking out for another person's best interest rather than your own in terms of being successful? And I'm just thinking of everybody listening to this, like what, what's this mindset and this, these philosophies you have that they can apply to enrich their lives? You know, um, thank you, Hal. Uh, it was really kind what you just said. And, um, my thoughts on service, like one of the things I like to ask people and almost every time I meet them or um, have an a, a appointment, whether it's with real producers or just in any time, I like to ask people what their like highest hope is. Mm. And that can be personal, can be business. It's like one of my favorite questions. And actually if someone, Jeremy Reisig, um, Brother James, like we talked about this question, gosh, like five years ago or something. And I've asked it a ton ever since. And, um, you know, what's your highest hope this year? If we were to toast, you know, on December, you know, 31st, what would it look like? And I find out so many interesting things. And sometimes I can literally just make an introduction and help people with that, or I can point them to a book because I've read a lot of books. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So I can point out like, here's four books on what you're trying to do. If that's truly your goal right now, and that's what you're like, this is how I can serve. Like, I just am always asking what's really important to people. Mm. Um, and I, I learned so much more about them and I feel much more connected to them. And my job now in Real Producers is just to connect people. And I feel like it's served so much more than just my job, you know, and I get to serve the people, not just like what they're doing for work, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, that's how I view like serving other people. Um, rarely do I talk about all the things that I do. Like it's weird to even say I have seven real producers because I don't really talk about it. Talk, talk about that. Yeah. 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 It's like, what do you do? Like, how can we work together? How can we help each other? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and the beauty of that is, you know, to me, it, it, a couple things is that uh, it was Zig Ziglar, right, that said that you can have everything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And it's one of my ones on my board. Yeah, I love. Is Ziggy. it? Yeah. yeah. Right. And I mean, and, you know, and and you embody that. And I've I've I strive to embody that. And I honestly, I, I'm I'm so impressed by you. I honestly am like, man, Kristen's like, she like, I feel like you're a level above me, Kristen. And like, I no. yeah, no, <laughs> I feel that. I I, I uh, it's amazing. But you're. Uh, I think that for anybody listening, um, it's very normal, unless you were taught that philosophy, right? Like that's not uh, necessarily ingrained in our culture in terms of being successful, right? It's like, you got to get as much as you can, as fast as you can. And um, I heard a quote a long time ago that helped shape my philosophy on this. In addition to the Zig Ziglar quote, Evan Pagan said, learn to love getting the short end of the stick. And he was talking about engaging with other people like in business. And he said, everyone's trying to me, me, me and get the most they can. People sense that and they feel it and they don't, it's not, it doesn't feel good. You know, and I think what you're talking about, right, is you're looking at how can I, how can I make sure you win? And the beauty of that is we can be selfishly selfless or you can flip it, right? Selflessly selfish, right? Which is like, you can know that, hey, if I just stop trying to focus on me, me, me and what I can get out of every situation and I actually become a person of service, I actually retrain my brain and my subconscious mind to genuinely care about the best interest of other people, right? And, and the best way is, is through language. That's how you start it. You start exactly what you're saying. What's your highest hope? right? So get yourself to ask that question. How can I best serve you? If you ask that question over and over and over to your spouse, to your children, I ask my wife almost every day, right? Like how, how, Hey, sweetie, how can I make your day easier today or better? Or what can I do to help you? Or right. If you focus on that and ask that question, it will rewire your brain in and of itself. And then the beauty of it is the experience that you'll have of someone says, actually, I really could use help in this area. Then you help that person and then they either reciprocate it or they reciprocate the appreciation. Like, oh my gosh, that meant so much to me. Thank you so much, right? And then, and it's like, now it's a, it creates these win-win scenarios and you're literally reinforcing this positive behavior of being of service. So I want to just reflect that back to you and anything to add to that? You know, as you were talking, I was thinking about, you know, I'm always, we're always talking about like now we serve 4,000 people between all the communities. Like we're mm. serving, how can we serve more people is literally the language. How do mm. we serve more people? Mm. And I think that that comes from, um, you know, you can give away 3,000 Miracle Morning books, like everybody listening, like you could give away a hundred Miracle Morning books. You could give away the app to your people. Um, you know, that has turned into, I do quotes every day with my team. Like while I'm doing my miracle morning, I pick out a quote for my team, for the the team each, for each day, you know, <laughs> like yeah. how do you, how can I serve more people is a, is a great question for your journal and scribing too. It's like, how do we, how do we serve more people? Yeah. Um, yeah. How do we serve more people? And I would add to that. How can I, how can I serve, you know, this person better or right, especially with my spouse, right? How can I be, how can I be a better service um, to my spouse? And, and of course I've found That's that asking them is usually better than trying to guess and, and think that, you know, you know, right? Good uh, call. Yeah. Love but it. I did this, sweetheart. <laughs> and like, yeah. That's not, I didn't want you to do that. I didn't ask for that. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's a good point. Right. So I've done, I've done that. Yeah. yeah, yeah of course, <laughs> we all have. What, what is next for you, Kristen? What's your focus moving forward? You know, we're, we're continuing to grow. Um, we went from four to seven this year. I'm looking to probably go to at least 10 real producers platform. Wow. And, um, at that point I'm, you know, I'm already, I'm doing some other things too. I'm partnering and doing some other things. So 
um, just to continue to grow and, and serve people on a different, different level. Um, one of the things I've been, I've been journaling on is like the quality of your questions, the quality of your life. And, yeah. uh, uh, that I feel like that's a book that I'm bringing on. So we'll see. Nice. <laughs> like, um, yeah. It is on my, it's on my board for this coming year. So <laughs> to write, to write that book. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So well, I will yeah. help in How any way I can. I'll bring you back on the podcast. I'll give you an endorsement, whatever I can do to support you for sure. Well, I, I appreciate it. How I really, uh, we want to get out your, your word the most, like seriously, you help change my behavior, my mom, my family, mm. my team, like my entire team. Um, the way we tackle the day is different. I affect that many people every day differently because of the books that you have written. So I, I thank you. Like, thank you, Hal. You truly thank changed you. my life. Oh, it means a lot. I appreciate And then you're paying it forward at a level that I could not, you know, I can't even imagine. I mean, I can hardly imagine and I can't thank you enough. So I'm glad it's reciprocal. And uh, it just goes to show literally what we were just talking about, right? You look at adding value and then it comes back to you. Call it karma, call it the law of reciprocation, call it whatever you want, but it, it is a law and it does happen. Even just practical sense, right? If I help you, you're inclined to help me and vice versa. So I'm glad we're I helping that. each other and helping a lot of people. Yeah, I believe that 100%. I believe in karma. I believe if you do the right thing over and over again, it's our core value on our team. Like you do the right thing. Great things happen. I just, Absolutely. just do the right thing. Yeah. And I do, I just want to mention for goal, for everybody listening right now, if you do want to model Kristen at any level in terms of paying for the Miracle Morning, um, you can get a bunch of pre-order bonuses at the new miracle morning.com. It just, the site just went live, I think this morning or yesterday when this podcast comes out. So go to the new miracle and, uh, and you can get books for your friends, your family, your employees, your clients. You don't have to buy 3000 like Kristen to get the bonuses. Um, but there's bonuses. We're doing, well, the you <laughs> <But> you <can. laughs> we're doing the, we're doing the miracle year live event. And if you buy five books, you get five tickets to that event to give to everyone that you gift a book to plus a ticket for yourself. So, um, well, Kristen, yes, I just, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for being a part of my life and thank you for being such a light in the world right now. Everyone I know that knows you has nothing but glowing things to say about you because of the way that you live your life. And what I love about it is you're leading by example for all of us, like everyone listening right now, listen, you know, if you go back and listen again, or just reflect on what Kristen said and what does she do? She starts every day with her miracle morning. She finds a quote for her team that will enrich their lives. She asks the question, how can I best serve today? She asks every person she meets, how, what is your highest hope? So that she knows what they want and how she can best serve. And she pays it forward and she helps as many people as she possibly can. And as a result, I mean, we didn't talk about your financial success, but Kristen, you're doing extraordinarily well. Like, you could retire at, you know, a very young age. So it is all, it all comes back to you, everybody. So um, until next time, uh, very, again, when you, when that book comes out, I am here to, to bring you back on. Thank you, Hal. I appreciate you. Thank you for everything. All right. Ditto. Goal achievers. I love you so much. Uh, members of the Miracle Morning community. Have a great day. And uh, we'll talk to y'all next week. Take care, everybody.